Welcome back to the drawing board with me, Stephen Lloyd, and today we will be talking about building an analytical model. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, you may have some kind of product or design detail, and an analytical model is a way of representing what's happening in real life in a slightly simpler format that can be easily calculated and the engineering be done in a much simpler way. So some golden rules. We don't have to work out every single detail of an object for the analytical model. All we have to do is make sure we assess the performance, sometimes at service and sometimes the performance during failure. That's the really important one because we want to know what its general behaviour is going to be as it approaches failure and what kind of loads we can expect that will cause a failure. I'm going to use a little worked example here. It's possibly one of the simplest seeming but can get really complex where you have two plates at a right angle with a gusset plate supporting the joint. Uh, you've got a little detail like this, this gusset plate is welded all the way around, a little bit of projection there so you can see it from every angle. What you could do with a stress model, and this is what's often used for finite element modelling, is you take all the stresses and strains from around the model and we apply a von Meister's yield criterion, which is all of the direct stresses and all of the shear stresses coming along, and there is a vector sum of the principal stresses and the shears, and as long as those are less than the von Meister's uh, yield strength which will be the same as say for S355 it'll be 355 newtons per square millimeter then the thing won't fail but that's quite difficult for us to do with hand calculation in our head if we just want a quick kind of sketch calculation to work out if things work properly so what we would probably do is break down this solid mass into maybe a really simple three element frame with some pin connections here and just a UDL at the front of it what we can do with that is then convert these very simple modelled elements back to the design elements and work out if each little component of this model still works. So for example, if we use this three, uh, three element frame arrangement, any loads that come on, that come down and cause a shear at this joint here, we can compare that value against the shear strength of the weld on that bottom face any of the compression that comes down this strut element here, we can compare that to the strength of the cross-sectional area of that whole gusset plate. Now why would we want to simplify it like that? And I said before that this gusset arrangement can become very complex. When you're considering a whole area like this rather than a simple frame, you get stresses that may want this element here to move in a different direction to what you're expecting. There will be some tension as you've got the moment restoring there. So it becomes really quite complicated and it's very difficult to get a true answer of will it work or won't it work in any simple means. So by breaking it down this way you can just come up with some really simple forces and check it and just get a quick idea of whether the sizing and whether the components are right for the job. Now you'd never have one simple component like that. I bring it back to the industry I work in with temporary shoring equipment and what we'd normally have, for example a little sketch of a manhole brace here, we'd have an element checked for the failure of that pinhole, we'd then assess how the force is going into that pinhole are transferred into the next element along, so we'll check the shear connection here, there may be some connections between this end plate and the main body of the, uh, of the long element here. We've got some checks for the lifting eyes and I'll come back to that as a bit of a special case. So you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven small elements that we then combine to determine if each individual part of this product will work. Lifting eyes are a special case, and I use these because it's one area where I don't like to convert it into a simple model. I prefer to keep a more complex stress strain model because with a lifting eye you have welds and you have forces that are not necessarily acting straight up or straight across. You have a combination of some shear forces and some direct tension and compression stresses and you want to combine all those into the Eurocode calculations for, for welds which you can use the simple directional method or you can use a little bit more complicated method which I prefer because it gives you a much more precise answer and usually gets you a little bit of extra strength out of the weld because we all know that the area that's going to fail in a model like that will be this corner here and what we don't want to happen is to tear at that corner and the whole thing fails before reaching our calculated failure load. I'll talk a little bit more about the difference between forces and moments and effects and stresses and strains in another 
uh, episode of Back to the Drawing Board uh, where we'll go through the difference between stress models and force models. Uh, but for now I hope that's given you a really quick idea of how we create a small analytical model uh, from what might seem like a complicated scenario. So I hope you join us again on Back to the Drawing Board.